I just grabbed a stool. She's a little high. <laughs> I like it. All right, so you're going to control it. We got the battery hooked up. She's in neutral. Welcome to Duluth Junction Workshop. In this episode, my dad and I are gonna get the F600 to run on gasoline from the fuel tank. Sweet, dude. What's that from? It's a tank that was stuck right here. Oh, very cool. What does it say? Inspected by 47 for use in April and October. Get anything. Oh, I guess a little bit. I literally can't believe it, but this tank looks brand new inside. There's barely even a spot of rust or varnish anywhere in the tank, and it I, it, it looks like, I, I don't even know. So I'm not gonna touch it, not gonna seal it, not gonna do anything. It's gonna go back in the truck and we'll rehook the lines up and uh, it's done. So remember we have a 262 inline six. It's the uh, brother to the 223. So it actually has, I've learned the 262 has a heavy duty in, engine block I believe a forged crankshaft and some other random things. One of the interesting things about it is it has a heavy duty fuel pump that is in the non-standard location. So I'm going to check the fuel filter that runs through that pump and see what's in it. I don't know if I'll be able to get this off by hand. Nope. What are you doing over here? Trying to get the uh, exhaust and intake manifold off and all of a sudden I got three bolts out and all of a sudden this just dropped. Well it's modular. Is that what they call a Ford Modular engine? That's what it says here, Ford Modular Company. Oh, Ford Motor Company. That's it. Oh, okay. So maybe uh, that's a good thing you got a replacement for this. Yeah, probably. So I think you're supposed to take off both at once. It's supposed to be easier. But I guess when they're broken in half, that doesn't apply so much. Right. While he works on that, I'm gonna be over here on the fuel filter. I'm up on the top here. I'm gonna try to pull the whole fuel filter off as one unit and do this on the bench. On the plus side, I now have a Molotov cocktail for the revolution. Oh yeah. It's nasty. What is coming out? <laughs> All right. That must be RTV or something. I wonder if someone has a hard time sealing it. I don't know what the deal was. Pretty nasty in there. You got that gunk along the edge. And then in the canister, we have Quite a bit of sediment in with the uh, fuel. All right, well, let's get this cleaned up and put the new filter in. Got our fuel filter here and filter element is 3271 from Napa. That was in stock for me, so I'm happy about that. Got a O-ring here. When I was rebuilding this, or rebuilding, when I was cleaning it up, I did, um, get acetone all the way in the bottom, false bottom kind of thing. So that's all good. And that is hand tight. The carb came off. It's a one barrel holly, holly. And it's nasty, it's covered in grease. 
which actually seems to have been preserving things. So we're gonna get a gallon of parts cleaner, one of those uh, tin buckets, and take this apart and submerge it. Hopefully this comes out a lot better. So, uh, what's going on? I didn't extract this bolt, but I'm getting her hot. And there was a little bit of PB blaster down in there. It, it does appear to be hot. So you uh, hit it with a punch first, and then you drill the pilot hole. Now I have this Thank extractor, you. and we're going to see it. Can't tell if it's doing anything. Well, the carb came out of the parts cleaner, and I gotta say it looks way, way better. We'll call that done for now. Now to move on to the other million parts that need to be cleaned up. Yikes. It's currently 95 degrees outside. I've done everything I wanna do outside this morning, and I'm gonna stay in and work on this carb right now. Now I went up to Forest Lake to the carburetor shop and they helped me pick out a custom carb kit for this 262 um, Holly one barrel. So it has a couple different pieces that are um, specific to this carb that were not in the original kit, um, but they helped me out to, to put together something that should work. So I've got my factory service manual here with my exploded view drawing, uh, a pile of random parts. <laughs> and. I'm gonna give it a shot. One thing the guy at the carb shop told me is that if you're looking at these holly carbs, you might be tempted to look at the number right here on the bottom of the float bowl, but um, apparently the real number is right here on the side of the float bowl by the fuel inlet. Now, that says um, Charlie 2 Tango Echo dash 9510. The other note that he gave me is that when you have this piece, um, there's a very small hole right in this hole. Um, so this, this hole has a smaller pinhole inside it. He said make sure to uh, clean that out with a, a little paper clip or whatever. And I actually found out a uh, safety pin is too large of diameter. So if you take a zip tie or a twist tie and strip the outside off of it, you can clear that hole out. Right, good. Otherwise, I think it should be a, a relatively normal uh, carb rebuild. One of these things, I don't think it was this. This piece he showed me has a, a little ball inside and the spring, so when you take it out, you kind of twist it and then pull it apart. Be careful though, because that ball <laughs> flew right out in the store. <laughs> so. We'll get going with this and check in afterward. See if I can not screw it up. Well, I swear I'm almost done with this thing. I've been not working too hard, but trying to enjoy my Saturday. And I'm here trying to set the float height. Now the float height's way off and I've been uh, slowly moving it down to um, meet this, what is it, like 13 64ths, just some BS measurement. Um, and I noticed something interesting is that on the float bowl uh, gasket, there's a little bit of warpage. So this piece here is, it's on the bottom of the float bowl, is pushed in a lot. And then the piece on this side, opposite the fuel inlet, is um, pushed in and it's tilted upward. So. I have to figure out if I can uh, bend those back and get them in the right kind of fashion to to seal again, or I hope I didn't do all this work for nothing. <laughs> I'm just gonna send it. So I just put the bowl on. I'm not gonna worry about the float height right now because it's easy enough to pull out and adjust in the truck. And Oh, it's it's really warped on the on the body side of the carb and the bowl itself is pretty warped too. <laughs> I'm just not very confident in this carburetor at all. But I figured out, you know, either I have to throw it in, in an oven or torch it or something to get it hot enough to go and bend it back. 
and then maybe I break it, maybe I have to rebuild another carb, or maybe I just throw the, the bowl back on and run it and see if it leaks. So that's what I figured I'd do first. If it leaks, I can figure out if I want to try to fix it um, or if I want to go with the spirit carb that I have for the truck. But wish me luck and we'll throw this on as it is. We got all the fuel filter stuff here. I restored the fuel filter uh, canister itself, put a new filter in it. I made a new gasket, which is the same gasket as the stock 223-215 fuel pump, but it goes behind this bracket. And these little uh, clips clip onto here and they hold the line in place. So what I did was I dipped these in Plasti Dip and dipped these in Plasti Dip. They were originally uh, rubber coated, so that'll help it reduce uh, rub through on the fuel line. Well, I put the bracket on upside down and the fuel pump gasket is disintegrating. So I'll have to come back to it at a different time with a new gasket. And I'm not gonna cut the big hole in the gasket next time. I don't know what I was doing that time. Ah. Putting the 262 manifolds back together. We, I got a, a manifold kit from Napa. That's a Felpro MS9960. And it comes with this four bolt uh, flange that's supposed to go in here. Well, the four bolt, it fits the old style, obviously. I don't know if this is a 223 is the three bolt. So now we know that's a 223 manifold. So this one didn't work from the set. I had to make a little template by doing a cram rubbing <laughs> on there and then cut out a piece from an exhaust manifold uh, sheet. So. Would you use a punch on those to pull them out, or was that a drill press? No, I used a punch. Punch for the holes. So we're going to, I don't know which way this goes up or down. I think down. the steel should go on the exhaust, because it's hotter probably. And that's the exhaust, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll put that on Just there. Just put it on this one first. And what did you do with the stud here? We had issues with the stud coming out. Yeah, we couldn't get it out and it broke off, so we... Um, was that a, a bolt before? It was a bolt before, yeah. So, um, put a thread chaser in and then uh, decided to take a stud off the old manifold and put it in here. Um, so, we'll see how that works. Okay, so this is going to come through here and then these two will go through there and... She'll mate up. Well, mate. that's the idea. There's a flapper valve in here, which we were able to get loosened up. And that has a little thermostat on here, so it's it's thermally actuated. What happens is when the engine is cold, the thing stays shut, and it doesn't allow that exhaust to come touch the intake. But uh, to prevent icing of the carburetor, uh, when this heats up, it opens up the valve here, and then the hot air can come up and heat up the intake to make sure that carburetor doesn't ice up. Just kind of interesting, I guess, maybe on a, a heavy or a medium duty truck, maybe it uh, was an issue they had. Well, I think the, I think it burns more efficient when the intake's warm, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess, yeah, um, my F100 has this too on the, on the FE352. Anyway, uh, let's take this over and, and get it uh, lined up. Throw in some brake clean on these and some thread chaser because these these look nasty. I don't know if you can see. The threads are almost gone on this one. So, so basically the difference between a thread chaser and a, a tap or die is that the tap or die will cut threads and the thread chaser will build threads back up to where they should be, um, as far as I know. That means that if you have threads that are not looking too good, that they got a little pushed over or uh, damaged, that you can throw a chaser over it instead of a, a tap or die that will help um, kind of work with al what's already there instead of taking things away. I guess when I upgrade to a two barrel I can go and replace these with new bolts. We got all our manifold bolts lined up in the order they're supposed to go in and they kind of go um, up and down, up and down, up and down uh, to make sure that is all tightened down. So the outside ones have thin washers on the very ends, and those kind of go in there. And then uh, we have 
dual washer areas or dual washer bolts and then we have single washer thick washer bolts and then the middle two that go in here they have no washers at all over here we think it might be this one is uh what a throttle linkage mm -hmm. bracket i also put uh, nic's on all of them because <laughs> One thing I've le learned working in old cars is never put a bolt in dry unless it asks for it. Either either do NICs or blue um, thread locker. And it will torque them from the center outward in a circular pattern, kind of like a spiral. And that's how you prevent the ba gasket from bunching up in the middle and having an exhaust leak. So the bracket with the three holes on it that we thought went on the back side of the manifold probably goes up on the front here on what, the second bolt. But I guess we'll get to that. So I'm torquing the 25. Um, we're not going to be able to get a torque wrench on these top two, I don't think. Yeah, there's no way that's going in there. So I just tighten those. It's pretty tight, so 25 is not much either. No, it's 23 to 28, the spec, so 25 is our middle ground. And you know the carb fits on correctly? I don't. Well, let's put that on before you torque them all. Okay. Goofball. I've just been putting uh, hoses onto the carburetor here, tighten them up. Put this hose on, I think it's part of the brake system, I'm not sure. Um, do need to get a new hose here. That one doesn't look too good. And is the uh, linkage on the carb hooked up? Yep. Sweet. Gonna put the uh, oil uh, or the fuel line on here. Turns out I did have the fuel filter bracket on the correct way because it um, contacts something on the engine block if you put it the wrong way. So I did all that work for nothing, but we got some um, engine safe enamel on it and put it back on. Didn't have to redo the plastic dip, but going on, realized there was some uh, mud bee stuff in the end of this fuel line that's coming from the fuel pump. So I'm gonna try to shove some wire in here and take it out. Yes. Jeez, this thing is just full. What the? Maybe okay. shoot some brake clean in. Gross. That's a lot of stuff that came out of it. Like crap. All right, so we installed the fuel filter, installed the manifolds, the carburetor, newly rebuilt, even though it's kind of warped, and got all the fuel lines hooked up. I threw about four gallons of E0 gas in the tank, so we just have to crank this thing over, see if we can um, maybe get it running on carb cleaner long enough to draw that fuel up into it. And if you remember from the Will It Run video, the, carb, or the fuel pump did pump, so we're hoping that'll kind of kick on and, and get enough in there. Battery's hooked up, right? Yep. Okay, let's, uh, I'll get on the side here. We also have a choke and a throttle now. look like gasoline to you or carb cleaner? <laughs> <laughs> gas. That'd be good. I think she's pumping gas. Okay, well I think the float level is set wrong. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> oh my god. If that was fuel, if that was uh, gasoline, then it really pumped through those lines pretty quick. Well, the uh, float wasn't set right after all and I knew there was an issue with it I just don't know I don't know how that little clip is supposed to adjust properly for the float to set so I guess we'll have to mess around with that what do you think you happy it's pumping I'm happy it's all pumping and it did fire off on uh, 
Carb cleaner. Carb cleaner, so we get that uh, float fixed, I think she'll run. I adjusted the float on the carburetor. We're gonna see if she's gonna run. It might take a little bit to fill the bowl up. Did you do anything about the warped bowl? Put some RTV on it. Uh -huh. On the gasket. What's, what's up with the seat you got here? I just grabbed a stool. She's a little high. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna control it. We got the battery hooked up. She's in neutral. So what's happening, I think, what I think is happening is what happened to Boo and what happened to Sonnet, which is the float is set too low. So when the carb fills itself up, fills the bowl up from the fuel inlet, it still thinks the fuel level's too low. It keeps pumping fuel in and then it never stops and it just geysers out the vent. At this point, I think we ought to pull the carburetor then. Did it seem to you like it was running for a couple seconds before it started overflowing? Yeah. That's what I thought too. That's good. What are you gonna chuck on this thing? Just the needle? I don't know. Come on. Hmm? Well, you're supposed to turn it upside down to set the float. Yeah. And you set the float on the truck. Yeah. I could see how that could be an issue. All right, so we got the uh, float reset on the carburetor for a third time. Third time's a charm. You get it right this time, or? I'm. I believe I got it right this time. The last time I did it, I tried to do it on the truck and you're supposed to have the carburetor upside down, so. And you did it the first time, so. Well, I had it off the truck too and it's not an easy one to set. Okay, so I think we got her set, so we get the battery hooked up, so let's just give her a whirl. We don't have a cooling system, so we're not gonna run her for very long. <laughs> Pumper. Hmm. It's getting just a couple. That's weird. getting fuel and it does sound like it has a little miss I think that's because well why don't you tell the audience why it has a slight miss so when we put the ignition in um, I think we have it a hundred and eighty degrees because it doesn't the turn switch. off the ignition switch yeah with the new key because it didn't have a key or an ignition switch um, and it doesn't turn off so the other night we were running it and we forgot to unhook the battery and I woke up in the middle of the night and looked out the window and there's a red light coming from Mouse's dash. So I ran, ran out and disconnected the battery. But so it might've burned the points up a little bit. Yeah, so if you are not familiar with points, 
um, they're really not a problem. You just have to turn the ignition off. Um, but the electricity was flowing through those contacts for like six hours. Probably, yeah. Probably. So that I, I have some new ones on the way at like 10 bucks. So we'll throw some new ones in. Otherwise, uh, it seems like it runs pretty well. The fuel uh, float bowl was a little bit difficult to set. And the we saw the carburetor uh, bowl was pretty, pretty warped. So as long as it doesn't leak, I'm okay with that. And it seems like it's doing okay so far. No leaks. She purrs like a kitten. <laughs> yeah, so next time we're gonna throw the radiator in and get the thing to run for a long time. And I need to throw a little, uh, patch the exhaust up. But thanks for watching and press on. Honestly.